And now our new Your Health segment in partnership with the University of Maryland Medical System and the School of Medicine. Joining us in the studio is Dr. Richard Lichtenstein of the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. We teased earlier in the program that this is about earbuds. You brought a pair of them, and these for people who don't have any are like headphones used to be, except they're little and they fit in your ear and connect to an iPod or that sort of thing. And I always thought the big danger was, was kids blasting them and, and affecting their hearing, but you've done some research that indicates they're more hazardous than that. Yeah, so I think that was uh, sort of the traditional thought was that, you know, playing them too loud would be a problem. But I became curious that, you know, when we are listening to music that we're distracted and when we're distracted, we're more prone to injury. Certainly this is what we see when we're looking at, you know, people texting and in the cars. And, and I thought perhaps the same thing was seen with pedestrians who are using these devices with their headphones. Was there a, a specific case that started you thinking about this or, or maybe talk more broadly about what you found? So there was a case, in, uh, a couple of cases actually in Maryland. One was a, a teenager who uh, was killed actually on uh, railroad tracks on, who was wearing headphones and then a couple of other cases that were similar with older, with older folks. And uh, when I was starting to look at headlines, I saw that this was not unique to Maryland, but in other states and actually all over different parts of the world even. What are the numbers like? How, how often is this an issue? So this is where it becomes a little bit difficult. We uh, looked at uh, cases between 2004 to 2011, and we found about 116 cases by scouring databases, including Google News and uh, campus databases as well as the National Electronic Injury Surveillance System and the Computer Product Safety Commission. So these were reported cases, but there's probably a lot more cases that people never even bear you know, to report. So we're looking at some video of people walking down the street with earbuds in. I guess there's a couple of factors. One is that um, your ability to hear that light rail train coming towards you is just blocked if the, if the music's loud enough, you're not going to hear anything else. But also, does it, does it affect your ability to concentrate where your, where your mind is when you're listening to something? So this is really uh, what I think is very important. So there's this concept that at least has been very well described with those that are texting in cars, and it's, this concept is called inattentional blindness, which is a pretty technical term pretty much for distraction where your mind is allocating resources to doing other activities. And the reality is, is that we really don't multitask as well as we think we can. So certainly things that are routine, like maybe chewing gum and walking around is really no problem. Things for, that are- for most of us, right? Right, <laughs> things that are pretty automatic. But things like it, when you're pretty much in tune to listening to a music or concentrating quite a bit on what you're listening to, then all of a sudden you're not necessarily expecting the unexpected. Um, what would you tell uh, parents uh, of, of kids who uh, like to walk around with these things? Or I suppose there's adults who walked around the street with uh, earbuds blasting as well. You know, they, they've invested in that iPod and they like listening to the music. Are you, is there a possibility of, of changing their behavior? Well, I think that's a good question. Certainly, by looking at sales of uh, MP3 players, these things are not going away. People are very uh, attached to them. They like their music. They like their music when they want to have their music. And this is something that I think education is probably a more reasonable option than legislation. So I would tell parents to be careful about both uh, factors, to be careful about the volume for the hearing damage, but also to be cognizant of the fact that when you have these earbuds in that you're really blocking out a lot of the stimuli like horns and sirens and things like that that are kind of warning you of possible danger that's you know, lurking ahead. A lot of the, uh, the victims of this, young males, Yes, we found about two-thirds were young males and, and about two-thirds were under the age of you know, uh, 30. So this is a really uh, a sign of the times of you know, who's at risk is the person of, who really enjoys their music you know, using iPods and MP3 players. Let's switch gears for a moment. You're also director of pediatric emergency medicine at the University of Maryland uh, Medical Center. Um, we're hearing a little bit about flu season maybe starting to creep up on us. Are you seeing any evidence of that? 
Well, we have, and so it's sort of, uh, you know, if you look at uh, uh, flu tracker with Google, and uh, it sort of has not really hit Maryland to the, st to the parts, but it certainly seems like it is coming, and it's probably a little bit later than what we're normally expecting. However, we still are seeing quite a few cases of cough, cold, fever, uh, things that are bringing people to the emergency department. Anything else going around at the moment? A lot of uh, gastroenteritis and yeah, uh, that's what I've been hearing. That's yeah, what I wanted to ask. It's sort of filling our doors, and you know there have been epidemics of a virus called norovirus that is commonly seen in cruise ships, but certainly has been uh, hitting the Mid-Atlantic area in D.C. and Baltimore quite quite hard. And, and schools are really sort of ideal, uh, you know, laboratories for for spreading that. Oh, that's absolutely true. The uh, kids are very good at spreading disease. Yeah. Um, the other thing is happening is we're weather's starting to get a little bit nicer. It never got really that bad this winter, but thinking ahead to summer sports, uh, spring sports activity, let's spend a couple of minutes on what parents ought to be thinking about before the kids head out to, to soccer or lacrosse practice. So I think uh, it's real important nowadays, I think we're not alone in thinking about the dangers of concussion and, and head uh, types of injuries when looking at sports. So certainly, um, you know, football players are not the only ones who are at risk and certainly uh, people who play lacrosse, baseball, hockey, you know, all sorts of sports are at risk. And I would, you know, one, have the prevention of wearing appropriate headgear, and two, if there's any signs of concussion, it's really the time to see uh, your physician. What do you look for? Um, and, and obviously, you know, we know a lot about uh, athletes of all ages who, who would like to hide any, uh, any injury and get back in the game. Yeah, so that's really where everyone used to think that a concussion, you had to basically be out. But really, it's a number of different types of symptoms, including just confusion or slow to respond or just not acting right. And if anything, we should really uh, be on cautious to be, take any symptom as the possibility of you know, being concussed and really uh, you know, encouraging uh, medical follow-up, and especially not to return to play. It, it does seem like uh, people take that a lot more seriously than they used to. Yes, I think there, and, and there's a good reason for that. I think, you know, there are good studies to show that, you know, the dangers of concussion and post-concussion syndrome is real, and we, we are looking at developing brains, and we want to do everything we can to preserve them so that they have reached their full potential. Are, are kids at a, at a higher risk, or, or is the, um, the, the risk of a concussion, the damage from a concussion, similar among age groups? Well, I think head injury is a pretty uh, diverse type of topic. So, uh, you know, everyone is affected a little bit differently and depending upon the type of injury and uh, when it happens and if it happens again, you know, certainly we don't really know the, you know, the data that well to say that, you know, one group is more prone. You know, I think a lot of people are concerned about soccer playing and the c repeated hits that you do when you're heading and those types of things are really need to be explored a little bit more, a little I, further. Yeah, I mean, I have heard before that, that it's the idea of like the, the repeated, that a mild concussion may go away, but if you put another one right behind it, it's a bigger deal. Yes, I think that's a very good way of looking at it. So certainly every, even the mildest concussion has to really be evaluated, and before they go back to play, it, you know, it should be seen by a medical professional. Yeah, there's one other item in the news today that I wanted to run by you, which was the HPV virus, the V is for virus, so it's the HPV vaccine, um, and there was a recommendation from the Academy of Pediatrics that uh, this has been recommended for, for girls, and we can talk about to what extent people are complying with that. But now it's recommended for boys of a certain age as well. Yes, yeah, so I think this is all uh, attempts to decrease, you know, something that's very bad, you know, human papillomavirus and its association with cancer. And I think that, you know, anything that we can do, again, in the preventive mode, uh, when kids are young and, and uh, you know, not necessarily thinking about what they'll be doing in the future is a, is a good idea. So it's certainly, uh, I think, a good start for prevention for something that may be seen later on in their life. There's been some controversy about the vaccine for a number of reasons. One, the mechanism of transmission of the virus is uh, sexual. Um, and also, it's, it's somewhat complex. It's not just one shot and go have a nice day. 
Yes, I think those are, it's definitely a little bit of a more complicated, you know, routine than other typical uh, vaccines and its mechanism, as you say, is, you know, one of these things that is for long term rather than for short term things that you can see in the near future. Right. All right. So to wrap up on the, the main thing we were talking about tonight, earbuds, let's be careful out there. Absolutely. I think that if anything, really be cognizant that, you know, it's not only you who may be distracted, but it may be the driver or somebody else who may not be thoughtful about you as being on the street. That's a good point. If you see somebody walking around with little white things in their ears, uh, cut them some slack. Or give them a little nudge. There you go. Dr. Richard Lichtenstein of the University of Maryland, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.